What if, what if you are 20% more efficient We spend up to two hours a day shopping, cooking, and eating. We could finally put all that time into something as useful, like watching the last series of Prison Break. Surely someone has supplemented all our dietary requirements, all the vitamins and minerals we need into one small capsule. Unfortunately, the answer is no, for three reasons. First, overdosing. While the vitamins may be beneficial to you, overdosing is deadly. Second, safety. Green tea, one of the most popular teas globally, and its concentrated form quickly becoming more mainstream. Now, green tea is made out of herbs, and since there are no manufacturing standards for herbal compounds, regulators do not require safety tests for its concentrated form, making it less safe for you and I, the consumers. Third, manufacturing. New York State Attorney's General Office investigated herbal products. They found that 80% of these products did not contain specific substances they listed on the box. 80%. A lot more research needs to be done on vitamins. Vitamin E, for example, and beta carotene, which in the body is converted to its more useful vitamin A, have antioxidants, which are thought to help prevent cancer. University of Washington researched and monitored 77,000 people, men and women aged 50 to 70. They concluded taking long-term high dosages of vitamin E can in fact increase your risk of cancer by 28%. Calcium. Now we all know calcium. It plays a vital role in our body, helps keep our bones strong and healthy. However, calcium can also affect the absorption of metals such as zinc, manganese and iron, as they all compete for absorption inside of our body. We require functions to truly synthesize and mutualize different vitamins and minerals. If we take them all at once, we're not allowing our body to do so efficiently. So, what does this mean? Do we continue with our routine of shopping, cooking and eating? Unfortunately, if we do continue with this mundane routine, we will in fact become more inefficient but how is this? Food nowadays is becoming less nutritious as it used to be. One apple in the 1950s has the same nutritional value as 100 apples today. Yes, 100. One orange in the 1950s has the same nutritional value as 21 oranges today. As the popular food arises, such as apples, oranges, and chicken, farmers are forced to breed these via selective breeding. Professor Michael Crawford of the London Metropolitan University investigated a chicken from 2004 to one in 1940. He concluded that our 2004 chicken had a third less protein and twice the ratio of fat. We need to look at a larger scale. We cannot preserve food for such a long period of time. We're talking about hundreds of years here. So what can we look at? What about weeds? You see, weeds are not desirable to humans, therefore they are not selectively bred. There's a specific weed that grows in North America called goldenrod. Now, goldenrod is a source of protein for bees. Fortunately, the Smithsonian had been keeping samples of this weed since 1842. So when Louis Ziska, a plant physiologist, went to compare this Victorian weed to the weed we have today, it showed that our weed had decreased in protein by 30%. We just established that this weed was not selectively bred. So how did it decrease in protein? What other factor could be affecting the nutritious content of this plant? What about global warming? We are constantly reminded the effects global warming has on our environment. It's one of the first things we hear on the news. But after all, isn't carbon dioxide the food for plants? Well, yes, as the carbon levels increase, a plant grows faster and bigger, but it decreases in nutritional value. The plant will substitute its iron and protein for carbohydrates, making a less iron and protein rich plant and to a more carbohydrate heavy plant. Iraqi Lozladeh, a mathematician at Arizona University, found that algae was becoming less nutritious as the carbon levels increased. He said, we are witnessing the greatest injection of carbohydrates into our biosphere, an injection that dilutes the nutrients in our food supply. 
It is estimated if this trend continues in 2050, 1.4 billion people will be at risk of protein deficiency. 1.4 billion people with the worst impacts felt in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. If it was easy as popping a pill, wouldn't people be healthier? We're entering a stage where food is becoming less nutritious due to demand or economy, and we're not able to rely on a fully supplement-based diet. We were all told as kids to eat our five a day, and that message has never been more important than now. So, what will the food of the future be? Well, it's not going to be this magical pill saving you time and possibly money. We have to stick with what we have. But most importantly, we must be aware of how changes in the environment is influencing the nutritional content of our food, which is having an effect on our health. Thank you.